What's the word, y'all? I'm trying to one take this one, ladies and gentlemen. We're here to talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers cashing in their money in the bank briefcase and snagging Donovan Mitchell out of nowhere. I'm sitting here watching Eurobasket, enjoying. Well, well, France has been disappointing through the first half or so. Um, I guess watching Dennis Schroeder beat up on France, and out of nowhere, Donovan Mitchell gets traded. And there's that big anticipation because the first notification just said that the Cleveland Cavaliers have acquired Donovan Mitchell. And for four minutes, everybody on Twitter is like, whoa, what? What was the package? What did they give up? Did they give up Mobley? Obviously not, y'all. Come on, man. One of the most untouchable young players in all of basketball. The trade ended up being... Colin Sexton, Laurie Marketing, Oche Abadji, three first-round picks and two swaps. But I'm excited for Cleveland basketball. I went to change the shirt, so don't make fun of this. This is a small. I don't wear it often. And I don't really like it because it's a 2015 road to the NBA Finals. And down here, my Chicago Bulls are in the grave. So don't really wear it often. It's, it's anti-Bulls propaganda at this point. But the trade happened. It felt inevitable that uh, Donovan Mitchell was going to get traded to New York. But I, I kind of... I don't want to make this about New York, obviously, but they've been in these conversations for the last month or so. The Jazz said they wanted to get it done before training camp, and then a couple days ago, Leon Rose decided he didn't want Danny Ainge dictating the future of his organization, so he extended this guy, R.J. Barrett, but the experts even said even with R.J. Barrett's extension, there's still a world where Donovan Mitchell ends up on New York, so I was like, okay, he's going to end up in New York, right? No. These boys came out of nowhere. There are teams that, that were linked to him, like the Cavs had been linked to him, but nobody really thought that they were going to really put it together. The Washington Wizards had been linked to him. Nobody thought the Washington Wizards were going to really put it together. The Cavs did it. And if I'm the Cavs, I do this 100% of the time. Now, you can have some conversations around Donovan Mitchell being 6'1", and Darius Garland being 6'1". This is the, one of the smallest backcourts in all of basketball. How is it going to work out? So we can have some conversations about what it will look like on the court over the next couple of weeks. This trade just happened 10 minutes ago. Let me go ahead and get my initial reactions out of this. I love this for the Cleveland Cavaliers. This is why. Uh, like, in that period of time between when I'm filming this video and when the, the actual pieces came out, um, I saw some people say overpay, overpay, overpay. This is why I don't believe this is an overpay and this can come back and bite me in a, two years or whatever. The reason I don't see this as an overpay is if we break down every single piece of this trade, there is nothing that you should be extremely attached to if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers as far as we believe that once we get to the point where we're ready to compete, a ch we compete for a championship, these pieces have to be on the team. Um, Colin Sexton, we didn't want to get him no money anyway. You know what I'm saying? We didn't want to give him the money anyway. He was a big trade piece for somebody. We thought we was going to have to dump him to the Dallas Mavericks for basically Reggie Bullock in a second. So we throw him in that trade. Boom. He got an extension, by the way. So shout out to Colin Sexton. Four years, $72 million. Easy. Um, the next piece, Laurie Marketing. Laurie Marketing is over there playing in Eurobasket right now. I just got the notification that he got traded. So poor fella. He's going to Utah, though. I, I don't know. Maybe he blossoms, you know. Laurie Marketing was there for a season, and he was good in that season. The Cavaliers surprised the world with their three-center lineup or three-seven-footer lineup. Now they're kind of going the opposite direction, ain't they? Getting a lot smaller. But there was nothing about what he performed last season to say, oh, w once we really into it, he has to be safe. Absolutely not. Um, Ote Abadzi played four games in the Summer League, and I was there for a couple of them. He looked really good. You know what I'm saying? He was one of the older players in the draft, if not the oldest player getting drafted in the first round. Uh, people saw him as a guy that could take some Isaac Okoro opportunities because he defends well and he shoots the ball well, and Isaac Okoro only does one of those two things. But again, he's only been in the organization for two months. There's no attachment to him whatsoever. If you told me that Ote Abadji was going to be the piece that we don't want to give in for a Donovan Mitchell trade, I would call you crazy. And then we talk about the first round picks. And this is why I don't care about the first round picks in this circumstances for the Cleveland Cavaliers. We drafted Darius Garland, who's already an all-star and only 21 years old, if I'm not mistaken. I would not be surprised if Bro made multiple all-NBA teams throughout the course of his career. We drafted Evan Mobley last year, and everybody knows that Evan Mobley is about to be an absolute stud. He looked amazing in this rookie season, and I'm guessing he'll only get better and better and better. We got Jared. We have this young core that, like, we basically should have made the playoffs this year if everybody just stayed healthy. Or not even everybody. If 80% of our roster, 70% of our roster stayed healthy, we would have, would have been in the playoffs. So I'm looking at those first-round picks like, look, man, with Donovan, we're guaranteed locked to make the playoffs. We talk about 23rd overall pick, 29th overall pick. No, they, they probably won't be that good. But these are picks that aren't going to be super valuable to, to us, right? And then I know it's, f it's basically five years worth, uh, worth of pick equity, but we got Evan Mobley for seven years, guaranteed. <laughs> we just extended Darius Garland. We got him for four more years, guaranteed. Jared Allen, four more years, guaranteed. How many years of Donald Mitchell's contract? Whatever it is, guaranteed. Those picks don't mean nothing to me, right? So I'm looking at their 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 uh, their depth chart. So it's probably going to look somewhere along the lines of Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Karis LeVert, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. That is a really good, really good starting five. 
off the bench, like yes, you gave up some depth here, but you will have Isaac Coro. You will eventually have um, uh, Ricky Rubio. I don't know when that is. Kevin Love is still on the roster. We brought in uh, Robin Lopez. Jetty Osmond is there. Dean Wade is there. The bench is maybe a lot to be desired, but I think that they can finagle this and they they mess with the minutes enough where Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell are switching gears. One of them is going with the second unit. One of them staying with the first unit. You know what I'm saying? They can figure it out. J.B. Bickerstaff is a very smart coach. I love it for them. You know, I'm ex I'm excited for Cleveland Cavaliers basketball because as long as Cleveland's been a thing, at least as me being an NBA fan, which started in 2002-2003, if LeBron wasn't on the roster, this team was heavily, heavily, like, irrelevant. And I understand it was only a small window when LeBron went to Miami and then, and then recent, but they were irrelevant. And when a trade like this, that is no longer the case. I would argue last year they weren't irrelevant. You know what I'm saying? It just took the injuries that pulled them out of the out of the hunt. The team has one of the best young cores in all of basketball now. Not one of maybe number one. I might be pushing the gun a little bit, but Darius Garland All Star, Jared Allen All Star, Donovan Mitchell All Star, Evan Mobley Super Stud. That's one of the best young cores in all of basketball. And as they continue to get reps and reps a part of each other and on the same team, it's only going to look better, I believe. Again, we could talk about the only core stuff. How does the defense look for Donovan Mitchell and, and Darius Garland? Because I think we can all agree Donovan Mitchell was absolutely dreadful defensively over the last couple of seasons, but specifically this year, it was just some of the worst defense I've ever seen. You know what I'm saying? It was really that bad. But they have the pieces in play that can hold them up. Now, of course, you need your perimeter defenders for sure, and I'm sure um, uh, Isaac Curl is going to get a ton of minutes this year, and they're going to ask Karis LeVert to lock in defensively a little bit more. Um, but with Evan Mobley and Jared Allen down low, the defense will probably still be comp – not probably, they will still be competent – can we somehow convince Donovan Mitchell to turn back the clock just a little bit to when he was in college? Because when he was in college, he was a plus defender. And now he don't have to worry about controlling the entire load offensively. Like, you know what I'm saying? When they were in Utah, they brought in Mike Conley. Like, hey, we're going to ease the pain for Donovan Mitchell, give him a real point guard in Mike Conley. But Mike Conley was cool. He even got an all-star appearance. But, but like, it, there's a difference between current Darius Garland and the, the the Mike Conley that we got over the last couple of years. So maybe since we're not asking Donovan Mitchell to be him 100% of the time, he can give us a little bit on the defensive side of the ball because we know it's there. He is undersized, obviously. There's only so much you can do when you're undersized like Donovan Mitchell is. But, but we just need you not to just let your man walk to the basket. One of the main reasons why this team has been eliminating the playoffs over the last couple of seasons, we're talking about the Utah Jazz with Donovan Mitchell, is because the defense had been, had been lackluster, terrible at the perimeter. And now we can ask you, we don't need you to average 40 in the playoff series no more. You did that in Utah. Congratulations. I'm exaggerating, but congratulations. We, we don't need that here. Lock in a little bit more defensively. If we could get 10% more effort from Donovan Mitchell, we feel very good about the way this team looks defensively, right? The only thing that, that hurts them a little bit is that if they want to get better in the near future, hypothetically at a trade deadline, they don't really have a lot of stuff to potentially throw in. Five, year worth, five years worth of pick equity is a lot, but again, like I'm saying, I would do that as well. Um, but there's no other piece there unless you're saying, listen, there's a team out there that's selling that might be interested in the 21-year-old Isaac Okoro in a couple months. Boom, we got a couple pieces that can help. I don't really know. If I'm the Utah Jazz, what, what a hell of an offseason for me. You know what I'm saying? As a team that has buckled down as a rebuilding team, trading Rudy Gobert for basically five first-round picks and basically getting five first-round picks for Donovan Mitchell as well, pretty good. We got Ote Abaji. We got Colin Sexton. Our fan base won't go out there and be like, hey, we win in seven games. We have a couple players there that might be interesting enough for Utah fans to buy tickets. Colin Sexton, I don't know what he going to look like after injury and everything. Bucket. Bro's average in the dub. Bucket. And I'm looking at my notifications because I feel like there's more to be said uh, I'm looking at Shams and Woj's Twitter right now. Okay, they have been tweeting. Um, the Utah Jazz. Here we go. Cleveland is sending three unprotected first-round picks. So that's 2025, 2027, and 2029. And then swaps in 2026 and 2028. Um, the Jazz acquired 13 unprotected or lightly protected picks through 2029, which is great. Because if you are the Utah Jazz, you're not getting people to sign to you. So the way you become a contender again or become a team that's a playoff guarantee like they have been in the last, I don't know, five seasons ago, seasons or so, is you have to draft well. They traded for Rudy Gobert on draft night. They traded for Donovan Mitchell on draft night. These are the things you need to do. You get your two-star players, boom, and then you use all the other picks to potentially go get a Mike Conley or you go get this guy or that guy, but you want to be, be an elevated version of the last version of that team. So to trade two 
all-star players and get back 13, 13 picks is pretty good. Unprotected slash lightly protected picks is amazing. And similar, this is what Wolder said, similarly to what the Minnesota Timberwolves did with Walker Kessler, same thing with the Cleveland Cavaliers. So that's basically another lottery pick or another first round pick because Oshie Abaji ain't played a single second of NBA basketball just yet. And even Woj just said, look, this is the lineup that Woj is talking about. A lineup including two all-stars, Darius Garland, Jared Allen, and a future all-star, Evan Mobley. And Donovan Mitchell just quoted Darius Garland's tweet and, and, and put some emojis. I, I think they're ready. I think, I think it's time. The NBA has been shooken up again. And now we got to start thinking about what tier of team does this... Does this put the Cleveland Cavaliers? Does this make them? Are they a contender this season? I, I I think a lot of that would have to do on what type of jump Evan Mobley takes, because it's in them. I think we all can agree. I don't know, man. I'm I'm sitting there thinking about it, trying to rack my brain around. Like, okay, what tier of teams to put them in the East? Are they better than Milwaukee Bucks? Would they be better than the Miami Heat? These are the the Philadelphia 76ers. These are like the top teams in the Eastern Conference. Can't forget about the Boston Celtics. How many of those teams the Cleveland Cavaliers just jump? Maybe it's none of them right now. Maybe it's none of them in this exact moment, but you have to realize 21-year-old Garland, about to be 26-year-old um, uh, Donovan Mitchell, 20-year-old Evan Mobley. This is not a trade thinking that, oh, we about to go win this ring right now, even though that will be cool. I mean, nobody's going to stop you from winning the ring right now if you're a fan of the team. But this is not a trade thinking that this is our, our last go-round. We're going to be solid because they extended pretty much all of the guys over there. And again, Evan Mobley sold his rookie deal. I think they, they leaped over like the Bulls. I think this trade helped them leap over a team like the Raptors. Um, the Atlanta Hawks made their own deal. I'm probably more secure with the the Cleveland Cavaliers than I am the Atlanta Hawks at this moment. Again, those are two teams that ain't played a single minute of basketball with their current teams. Maybe this doesn't put them in the upper, upper echelon this season, but it helps them become part of that in a year and two. That boy Kevin Love stuck through it. Think about that. Two years ago, Kevin Love was pissed off at his teammates and the one teammate that he was specifically pissed off on, oh, oh, that's a bad sentence. He was pissed off with is gone. He ain't got to worry about Kyle Sexton taking up all the shots no more. And now he could be be a savvy vet to some of the the, the one of the best young cores in all of basketball. I'm excited for Cleveland Cavaliers basketball. I'm sure there's other things about this trade that I want to talk about. But if this is the only piece of content we got, I might be back in a couple of days to give y'all a take number two on my takes of this stuff, man. Donovan Mitchell, 45 and 10. In that backcourt. That's 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 kind of nice. 